So the more a person looks around and sees the world around him, sees the world around her, they realize, okay, so even life is not promised to us. No one is guaranteed even tomorrow. I can tell you personally that there are many times where I think I'm going to die. Not because uh, I think of any other reason other than the fact that just a simple reality. Simple reality of how you feel. A simple reality of certain circumstances that are happening in your life. And the only thing you can think of during that time is not how much money you have in the bank. And not, uh, did I call my best friend? Oh, did I have enough fun in my life? The only thing you can think of if you have a brain in your mind is, what am I going to tell my maker when I see him? What do I have to offer? What am I going to say? What, what, what can I possibly say that I did in this world? He gave me an X amount of years. What can I, what did I bring home? What did I bring home? This Rabotai Karim is one of the most important thoughts that a person needs to have. Why? Judgment Day is literally a week away. Less. And during Rosh Hashanah, the Gemara in Masechet Rosh Hashanah says, the entire world goes in a row, single file row in front of a Boreid Barach, in front of a Kadosh Baruch Hu, like sheep. You know when they, the, the guys that are transferring tens of thousands of sheep from one place to another. In the beginning you see it's huge amounts. Looks like a piece of land is moving. But then when they want to herd them and put them into a ranch, into a place, what do they do? Single files. Tiny little door, one in at a time. One in at a time. The Gemara says, on Rosh Hashanah, HaKadosh Baruch Hu has every single creature, Jew or Gentile, come in front of him and he has to judge. Is this person going to live for another year or not? Is this person going to have money or not? Is he going to profit or lose? Get married, get divorced. Have kids, lose kids, Hashem Yishmo. Be healthy, get sick. All of those things are going to be decided literally in a matter of a few days. And the more a person realizes what's on the line, the more they understand, maybe I do need to look in the mirror a little more often and start preparing myself to, what have I achieved in my life? So a woman can say, well, I had kids. Good for you, you had kids. But is it good for the world that you had kids? If you brought four Hitlers into the world, it was better off you didn't bring anybody. But if your kids know a little bit of Torah, they know you have Yirat Shemaim, they have a fear of the Almighty, they're good to people, they're nice to people, they're kind, they're, they're not a, a, a disaster, a tragedy, a hazard to society, then yeah, Baruch Hashem, you had kids. But if your kids are simply causing harm to the world around them, it was better off you didn't bring those kids. And guess what? The difference between Hitler and a tzaddik is how much Torah he's going to learn. Why? Because that Torah is the only tool that's going to make him into what he is going to be. If he has the Torah, he can be a tzaddik. If he doesn't have a Torah, there's no doubt that he will be a rasha. Why? There is no way to be a righteous person without having the manual from a Kadosh Baruch Hu. Now you can say, yeah, but other religions have a manual. Sure, let's see what their people did over the years. You have the manual of the Christians that have murdered more people than all of society put together over the last hundred years in the name of their religion, in the name of their false god. When you have the Muslims, they say, yeah, we teach ethics. Yes, you teach ethics, but unfortunately, you're not ethical yourself and your leaders are not ethical because they're mass murderers. Today, the past, the, uh, the, and the future. There's a reason, there's a prophecy where Kadosh Baruch Hu says he's going to punish these people. He's not going to punish the righteous Noahides. He's not going to punish the righteous Jews. But he will punish the wicked people, whether they're Jews or Gentiles. The difference between wicked and not, who listened to the Torah? If you created your own manual, certainly you're not listening to the Torah. You're contradicting the Torah. So a person that looks into where they stand and say, wait a minute, I'm not promised tomorrow at all, live or die. But most people don't really like to think about things like this. It's very morbid. 
People get depressed about it. They don't want to think about dying. They don't want to think about getting sick. Yeah, but your brother is sick. Your cousin is sick. Your uncle is sick. You're somebody you know is sick. Yeah, yeah, but let's not talk about it. Oh, so we'll pretend he's healthy? There's a reason why the Gemara Masechet Kiddushin at the end of the Masechet says, The greatest of doctors goes to Gehenom. What? All the doctors in the room get scared. What do you mean? The best doctor goes to Gehenom? Yeah, that's what the Gemara says. Why would the best doctor go to Gehenom? Is that the best doctor that he has a special skill and he's the best spinal surgeon? No, no, no. The best doctor where he thinks he has more mercy than God. He has a patient in front of him and he knows the patient is sick. He checked, he looks at the test. The guy has terminal cancer. The guy has coronavirus. The guy has uh, Pikachu, whatever he has. He has something. And he knows the guy's in bad shape. But he knows the guy is happy. Why? He just got married. He's young. He's healthy. He feels healthy. He's telling him about the vacation he's going with his new wife. They're going to go bike riding and mountain climbing and all types of things. And we're going to go on vacation for six months because they made a bunch of money on Wall Street. And, da, 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 da. and he's excited about it. And the doctor knows he's not going to live six weeks. What six months? But what am I going to tell him? The doctor thinks, well, I'm going to tell him that I'm going to ruin his... No, I don't want to... If I tell him, he's going to say, why are you so scary, doctor? Why are you being so scary? Why are you being so negative? So you know what? I'm going to tell him, oh, I checked, everything's good. Enjoy your vacation. The Gemara says, that doctor, he goes to Gainom. Why? He's going to shock. Why don't you tell the patient the truth? Yeah, but then I'll make him upset. It's better he's upset and knows the truth and he can prepare for it than live a lie. The Rambam says, the Chachamim that speak to the public and tell them the truth, despite how much it hurts, they are the spiritual doctors. Those doctors are what we need in the world. But unfortunately, as times get more and more difficult, the addictions to money and otherwise get greater and greater, and the truth is more and more lost. So those doctors are very few and far in between, very hard to find them. So a person has to do what a lot of people in the medical world. What do most people do when they feel a little itch, a little pain, a little headache, some bump? What are the fir first thing that 90% of society, at least in America, first thing they do? Dr. Google. Self-diagnose. Did it, WebMD, Google, whatever you go on, whatever, whatever your preference is. I have a pain in my left side. And then there's other applications. Okay, what color hair do you have? What color eyes do you have? What did you do last week? And they ask you a bunch of questions. So then you think, oh, since I can ask all these questions, probably what the doctor's doing, you start self-diagnosing. Oh, yeah, I happen to have a one big toe, and I happen to have uh, one uh, black eye, and I happen to have this. By the time he's, oh, no, it's just a toothache. Yeah, but my foot hurts because of a toothache. He's not going to be show. But somehow he's like, oh, you know what, I'm fine. He self-diagnosed himself. He feels fine. I don't need to go to the doctor. Now, when it comes to medicine, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this self-diagnosing. But when it comes to spirituality, you don't really have another choice. You have to self-diagnose. You have to self-diagnose and check to see where you stand. There's an instruction set that it's called the Torah. And the Torah tells you that you're obligated to do certain things. There are certain things that are obvious. And there are certain things that perhaps are not so obvious. You have to learn them. You have to know what it says. Not just the stories, but also the commandments, the obligations. The Chachamim spent everything they possibly could, all of their energy, their resources, to try to identify who they really are and where they stand. During this time of the year, many of them took more and more on themselves because they wanted to perfect themselves, because they knew that the day will come and they're going to have to meet their maker. And they have to report, what have we done? Shalom and hi everybody. We're back here in the United States after six extraordinary weeks in Eretz Yisrael, the Holy Land. We saw extraordinary things there. The beauty of the Kotel, the beauty of the land itself, and of course, the extraordinary beauty of the Chachamim. A huge event where several thousand people showed up to honor the Torah alongside us and also hear the wisdom of G'dolei Adol was what we started the uh, trip with. 
But along the next several weeks, we got to meet many other Chachamim, spoke in many different places, Kolel, Yeshivot, Pateknesset. And we got to see some of the most extraordinary things I've ever seen in my life. But one of the things that we did see that is not as exactly uh, as exciting is the spiritual poverty that's in Eretz Yisrael in certain places. Places like Tel Aviv, places that people are walking the streets without having a concept of what modesty is, without having a concept of who the God of Israel is, without even having a concept that the fact that they're stepping on holy ground. These are our holy brothers and sisters that we've dedicated our life to help to get them closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And one of the things that we're doing in the United States, in Australia, in Canada, in England, and many other places around the world. Baruch Hashem, we've succeeded in doing it. But one of the other things that we did see is also that there's a material poverty. A material poverty is simply so abundant, so extraordinary, that it breaks your heart. We're sitting in our house when the next door neighbor uh, that you know decided to pass by to say hello, and while they were saying hello, they asked us if we have any extra toys because they simply couldn't afford to buy their kids any toys. Of course, my kids gave them their toys, and Baruch Hashem, we got to fulfill the mitzvah, but there are thousands upon thousands of these types of families, families of Chachamim, families of tzaddikim that simply have poverty as a standard day, way of living. These are the types of families that we've dedicated our lives to help as well. Over the last few years, we've helped tens of thousands of people to feed them during the holidays, to get them toys, to get them clothes, to get them beds, to get them whatever we possibly can. During this trip, we also lost a very dear friend, one of our partners in the distribution, a very dear friend of ours, Giveret Ital, that really dedicated her life to helping Am Yisrael. We're going to miss her, but as a dedication to her, as a dedication for Klal Yisrael, and as another way to honor our Kadosh Baruch Hu, we're continuing to do our food distribution as well as our spiritual distribution. We need your help. This time of the year is Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, the high holidays. These are the times where most people donate the most, most of their money during this time of the year because they need the righteous judgment. They need the good judgment. They need to be blessed with a new child, with financial success, with a health miracle, with all types of issues. And Baruch Hashem, people know that the blessings of the Mezakeh Rabim, people that have dedicated their life to helping Am Yisrael, those blessings get a special VIP treatment in Shemaim. Over the years, we've had many people tell us how each and every single one of their blessings that they received from us was fulfilled during that year. And as a result of their donations, they got many, many more folds of blessings than they could ever imagine. Please partner with us during this time of the year. Be generous and also be understanding that this is the time where every single one of us gets judged and every one of us needs a little help. If we help HaKadosh Baruch Hu's children, spiritually and materially, there is no doubt in my mind that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will also help us as well. Thank you very much for all of your support over the years. May Hashem continue to bless you. And Be'ezrat Hashem, we will all have a Shana Tova. ידידיי ואהוביי, אחיי ואחיותיי היקרים. אם שמתם לב, ארגון בעזרת השם פעיל במשך כל השנה. הפעילות שלו מתבצעת במישור הגשמי והרוחני, זאת אומרת, לדאוג לאחינו בית ישראל, גם לנשמה וגם לגוף. ישנם אנשים שעניים בתורה, ישנם אנשים שעניים מבחינה כלכלית. לקחנו על עצמנו את התפקיד הקשה לדאוג, גם מבחינה רוחנית וגם מבחינה גשמית, לכלל ישראל, בארץ ובעולם. ברוך השם עד היום נעזרו על ידינו עשרות אלפי אנשים, משפחות נזקקות, לא רק מבחינה רוחנית, גם מבחינה גשמית, אם זה סלים בחגים, אם זה אוכל, אם זה שתייה, אם זה עזרה בעניינים רפואיים, בכל דבר ועניין שהיה, נרתמנו לעזור, והחידוש הגדול, שלא על מנת לקבל פרס. בלי אחוזים, בלי עניינים, עוד הפוך. ראשי הארגון באים ותורמים מכספם את כל מה שצריך כדי לבוא ולעזור לעם ישראל. 
זה הארגון היחיד שאני יכול לבוא ולהעיד שכולו לשם שמיים. לכן ידידיי ואהוביי, אנחנו מבקשים את עזרתכם לבוא ולהמשיך להפוך את העולם למקום יותר טוב. הן מבחינה רוחנית, הן מבחינה גשמית, ואנחנו בקמפיין הקבוע שלנו לימים נוראים, לפני החגים, שאנחנו באים ודואגים לאלפי אנשים בסלי מזון, בעזרה לחגים ובשאר המצרכים. לצורך זה פתחנו בקמפיין גיוס המונים של עזרה לנזקקים ועוד קמפיין של תמיכה כללית בפעילות הארגון שנלחם במשך כל השנה בכוחות הרע, בעניינים של כפירה, בהפצת תורה ויהדות. כל מי שירצה לבוא ולהיות שותף, כאן בדף הזה של הקמפיין, מוזמן לבוא ויקבל פריקת שמיים. שכל משאלות לבכם יתקיימו לטובה. שנה טובה ומתוקה, שנה טובה ומבורכת, ארגון בעזרת השם.